going to show you how to make a quick and yummy meatloaf. Uh, this is a versatile res recipe. You can substitute uh, various things and we'll get to that when we get to each stage. First of all, you want to start out with one to two pounds of this hamburger. I have probably it's a little bit over a pound. I wish I had two, but this is what I got, so this is what I'm using. So that's what the, the you want to put that in there. Then you're going to want to get an onion. To chop the onion up and throw that in the pan too. To this, I want to add one egg. I want to add two thirds cup of milk. And you'll see why we need that in a little bit here. I want to add a fourth of a cup of ketchup. If you don't have ketchup, you can use, I would use a fourth of a cup of tomato sauce with a teaspoon of sugar added. You gotta sweeten up your tomato sauce a little bit. I should have added, if you didn't want to use the actual onion or you didn't have an onion, you can use, um, you can use a fourth cup of dried minced onions instead of the actual fresh onion, but I happen to have a ton of fresh onions, so I'm going to use that. You want to use a fourth to a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and I'm just going to sort of wing it here, but if, those are the precise measurements for you. <laughs> And about a half to a full teaspoon of salt. I generally use half of whatever it's called for because my husband automatically salts everything. And you want one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. And I never say that right. So Worcestershire, Worcestershire, whatever it is. There you go. That's what you want. You want one tablespoon of that. Now before we mix this up, in a separate container, bowl, whatever you got, you're going to want three tablespoons of brown sugar. And if you don't have any brown sugar, I have a video on how to make brown sugar. Three tablespoons of brown sugar. You want one, one tablespoon of yellow mustard like you put on a hot dog. Back to the ketchup again. You want three more tablespoons of the ketchup. We're already out, and you had to open up the can of tomato sauce. You see, got some more uses for it here. Same thing. Add a teaspoon of sugar to your th three tablespoons, and it'll it'll be okay. I forgot to add that I usually use two tablespoons of Lipton onion mix, onion soup mix, or I make my own. There's a vi video on that. Um, sadly, I forgot to put it in this, so it's too bad. It's too late now. It's already started cooking, but that adds a lot of flavor and more um, more flavor to it. Which are, I'm sort of disappointed that I completely forgot. Two tablespoons of onion soup mix. It has the onion powder and garlic, but I used a fresh onion, so it probably isn't going to have much of a difference. But usually, if you're using minced onion, this really has a little bit of a pickup for the flavor. All right, the last part of what we're going to add to this is the really versatile part. I use oatmeal. Um, you can use really any unflavored oatmeal will work. You can use two cups of oatmeal, two cups of breadcrumbs. You can make breadcrumbs by just taking bread and um, tearing it into little teeny tiny pieces, rubbing it between your hand, making it small. You can toast it and then use a grater to grate it. You can save those ends up. My family won't use eat the ends of bread and uh, you can grate those up. It's a great way to, if you had bread sitting in your bread box, it's not moldy, but it's getting dried out, it's stale, you can use that, that's great. You can use saltine crackers, just crunch up two cups of them. Um, do them three or four at a time, you don't want to crunch your whole package up, you just want two cups, so crunch up a little bit of time until you fill two cups. I've used Ritz crackers in a real pinch, that'll work. Um, if you're really, really, really in a bind and you got plain corn flakes. I don't know about frosted flakes, but just plain corn flakes. You could crunch those up and use those. Obviously, all of these things are going to change the taste just a slight bit, but the main reason why you're using the things that we just discussed is to hold your meatloaf together. 
Um, I use oatmeal because we usually, I order about 50 pounds of oatmeal a year. And sometimes you got to start finding things to use the oatmeal. Now it looks like a lot. Don't be tempted to skip, skimp on this because if you do, your meatloaf is going to fall apart. I'm going to use gloves. I don't, I think it's grody to touch. <laughs> I don't like touching raw meat. This is a little messy. Should have got a little bit of a bigger bowl here. Let me try to get that egg in there. Your egg is also an emulsifier. It's going to help glue it together. The egg and the oatmeal. You can, by the way, you can put this, if you have a stand mixer, you can put it in the stand mixer. In fact, it makes it really easy when you're doing multiple things at once to use the stand mixer. Because you can just throw the ingredients one by one in there and then just turn it on. And it can mix while you're finishing up whatever else you're doing. I'm just going to transfer my meatloaf, the meat product there, into my pan. I'm going to squish it down. Squish it in the corners. It's sort of grody. The part that we put in the actual cup and mixed it up yet, we just want to mix that up. If you have uncooked bacon, this would be a, also you can use on top of it. I'm going to coat the top of the meatloaf. And my oven is preheated to 350. I probably should have said that to begin with. And I'm just going to cover it with this foil. If you don't have foil, you can use a I like a cookie sheet, just put it on top of it. Even a pizza pan will work. And this is just so you don't want it to get too burned on top because it's got a lot of density in there with that meat. So it's going to have to cook in the inside. So you, what we're going to do is cook it and we'll take off that foil about halfway or maybe 10 minutes closer to the end so the top can start brown. I'm going to put this in for an hour and I'm going to check it at least 30 minutes into it and then we'll be taking the foil off at some point. For a quick dessert, go with the meatloaf and potatoes, which is going to be a separate video. Uh, this is just fruit, and I've got one can of mandarin oranges. I'm going to put it in there undrained. I've got two cans of fruit cocktail. I'm going to put those in there undrained. And then I have a larger, because pineapple for some reason comes even the crushed cans, opposed to I used the three 15 ounce cans on these other. So for the, you can use chunk or sliced and then cut it up into smaller pieces, pineapple, or you can use, I'm using the crushed. If you have some cherries laying around or grapes that you want to cut up, or if you have um, coconut flakes, I usually do shaved coconut in here, but I'm out tonight. And I'm not putting all the pineapple juice in there. it makes it a little acidic. Pop that in the fridge. The meatloaf is out and we are ready to eat. And so this was the meatloaf and then the Hasselback potato which is a separate video. And I'll post some pictures and we can look at what it looks like on the plate. So not very hard and about an hour with prep. Probably got, you're looking at an hour and a half. It is a lot of prep but it, you know, you can put it in the oven and let it cook. So this has been Canterbury Trails Farm. Talk to you later. Bye.